January 5th last year, Vice President Pence, Chief of Staff, called the VP's lead Secret Service agent, to, called him to his office in the White House. According to a report from the New York Times just today, the Chief of Staff, Mark Short, had a message for the agent. The president was going to turn publicly against the vice president, and there could be a security risk to Mr. Pence because of it. The next day, January 6th, a mob of Trump supporters stormed the Capitol, shouting, hang Mike Pence. In the days leading up to the insurrection, President Trump pressured Pence to overturn the election results during the congressional certification process. Of course, he refused to do so, saying correctly he did not have that power. The Times report comes as the January 6th committee gets set to hold its first public hearing coming up this Thursday night in prime time. Today, Justice Department officials did what members of the committee asked them to do. They charged the former Trump advisor Pete Navarro with contempt of Congress and took him into custody. Navarro has refused to talk to lawmakers on the committee, but he has been more than willing to speak to reporters. He's done it again and again, including just yesterday with MSNBC's Ari Melber. You're risking going potentially to jail, not to talk to them, but you're out here talking in public. You do realize these investigators can hear you when you talk on TV. What we're talking about now, Ari, is the case law itself and the constitutionality of executive privilege, testimony immunity. It's just not true. Navarro spoke again today after appearing in federal court this afternoon. He slammed the January 6th committee, called it unconstitutional, said prosecutors are launching a preemptive strike on the civil lawsuit he filed against the committee. Navarro once again claims he can't cooperate because President Trump invoked executive privilege. The untenable constitutional position we have here, uh, and there's a whole lot of other issues with those subpoenas, um, is um, I have uh, testimony immunity, uh, and the president, uh, there's Trump executive privilege. He's wrong on the facts. Navarro did not enter a plea today, and he's currently representing himself, though he's not a lawyer. NBC's senior national political correspondent Sahil Kapoor is here. Sahil, has this committee responded since Navarro's arrest and statements? Well, Chef Peter Navarro was charged uh, and arrested today on two counts of contempt of Congress, one for failing uh, to show up to his scheduled deposition testimony and the second for refusing uh, to provide documents as per that lawful subpoena. Now, the committee has not formally commented on this indictment, but we know this is something the committee had wanted. They had been hoping for a more aggressive uh, enforcement posture from the Justice Department quite publicly uh, as recently as two months ago when they uh, met and voted to hold Navarro and uh, Dan Scavino and other uh, Trump aide in contempt. Adam Schiff, one of the members on this committee, uh, responded abstractly after that indictment saying prosecution of those who refuse to comply with the subpoena is essential for this committee to fulfill its oversight functions. Now, who is Peter Navarro? Why is he significant? He's the former Trump trade advisor who involved himself in this plot to overturn the result of the 2020 election. He's spoken quite publicly about how he has worked with Steve Bannon. He was coordinating with more than 100 lawmakers on it. Uh, according to Navarro, uh, then-President Trump himself was on board with this plan. The committee uh, called him up and said, uh, you have information that's very relevant to our investigation. Come in and talk to us about it. They issued a subpoena. He did not comply. The committee's hope, Shep, according to sources I've spoken to, is that this is the beginning of a more aggressive posture by the Justice Department that will also include uh, charges and, and uh, arrests against other members that, that the committee has cited, but the DOJ has not acted on, most notably Dan Scavino, as I mentioned, as well as Mark Meadows, the chief of staff at the time. What are we expecting from the committee's first hearing in primetime next week? It'll be next Thursday, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, the committee has held its cards close to the vest, not revealing much. Uh, we don't officially have a witness list, although there is some indication that the committee is looking at people in former Vice President Pence's orbit. The reason being Pence is a crucial foil to then-President Trump, because he refused to go along with that effort to overturn the election simply by discounting electors. He's had a very public break uh, with the former president ever since then. We know the committee... Uh, has a desire to convey to the American public what happened on January 6th, the violent attack on the Capitol, but more importantly, the bigger picture, Shep. Everything that led up to it, they have described it, sources on the committee have described it as a fire that had been kindling for months and months and months. They want to describe who did the kindling, 
who lit the match, why we're here. And according to Liz Cheney, the vice chair of the committee, a Republican, they also, also want to talk about then-President Trump's role in pressuring the Justice Department to overturn the result mm. of the election and stay in power, even though he lost. Chef. Sahil Kapoor, live tonight. Thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.